Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. Yes, is 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 is. I had a friend used to stutter. It's 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 that time again, people. Don't offend, Eddie. I'm not trying to offend. I'm just saying, <laughs> saying people can't get offended about everything. Everything can't be offensive. It's people who still stutter. But Herman, the, the, Herman, Herman Cain used to stutter. But the offended get offended because they're offended. The guy who was the voice of the Lion King used to stutter. It's a lot of famous people who had to work on not stuttering. Benny Cain used to stutter. But anyway, this is Poise Talk Radio. Live. And I know you people, and I, and see, when I say you, you people, when I say you people, it's different mm -hmm. than when Gabriel say you people. You people. I, I went to an event this morning, and one of the ladies was talking to me, and she was saying, Eddie, I love you, I love you, but that guy, mm -hmm. that guy on your show, I say, <laughs> which guy? It's only one other guy. Gabriel? She said, yeah, that's him. Woo. I say. I love my people out there. I say, <laughs> why you don't like Gabriel? She say, sometimes he just don't, He it, what he says. He don't understand. I say, uh -huh. yeah, but Gabriel is his Hispanic. I'm black. Gabriel is giving you a different point of view. And Gabriel can't give you the black point of view. He can only give you the Hispanic or the Latin point of view of looking at black folks. Uh -huh. And every now and then he may say something in which he's not intentionally trying to offend you, but you may get offended. I'm just saying. And, and it happens all the time. Because I know I offend a hell of a lot of people on this show. But I don't care. Gabriel actually cares. He's not trying to. He's not going out of his way to offend you. And if you wanted to get real offended. Uh -oh. If we had Tim doing this show. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Tim, Tim, Tim has been with us the whole time. We had but the fireman but, but if Tim had been Memphis, <clears throat> Memphis, Tennessee, old farm boy. Talk. Cracker. I ain't say that. Oh, oh. <laughs> you know, it would have been a different kind of show. Yeah. But anyway, Porch Talk Radio with your host, Eddie Adams Jr. and Gabriel Phillips. That's right. Doing what we do. And I'm telling you now, don't hold me responsible for what you do after this show. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you now, because I'm going to talk about something that probably there's a lot of more people, and I do mean a lot of more, Mo. out there who could probably do a better job than I. See, normally you brought I say me, than me, but that I, the Queen's English. <laughs> there you go. Because when I give you this information, I don't want you to sit on your hands like you normally do. What I want you to do is go do something with the info. I'm not going to give you all of it because I know some of y'all. Y'all will go do it. It won't be successful. Uh huh. You you don't want to take responsibility for nothing you do. So you're going to be talking, well, Eddie Adams told me to do this. Mm -hmm. I ain't uh, telling you. Uh, See, I'm, staying, I'm saying it before I even open the show. Uh, I'm telling you now. I am not responsible for anything you do or do not do with the information I'm about to give you. So this is a disclaimer, right? That's a disclaimer. Thank you. I'm doing my own disclaimer. There we go. And, I, and I'm, I'm doing it several times through the course of this show. So in case somebody comes in while we into this and, and say, well, I didn't hear the disclaimer. I came in in the middle of the show. I'm going to say this several times. Okay. The show, Porch Talk Radio. Uh huh. If you want to call in during the show, and I'm going to actually ask you to call in during the show. 813-251-9867. 813-251-9867. Mm -hmm. 
888-789-9867. If you want to call me after the show, I'm going to encourage you. This week I'm encouraging you. I'm telling you, call me after the show. If you got some questions, if you find some information, if you want to tell me some stuff, you know, Ed Adams Jr. cell phone number, 813-12. Tim, Tim was out last week, and see, he don't know we didn't have an agenda last week because my, my printer went on strike. It, it, it wouldn't print. You fixed it. No, yeah, I fixed it for this week, but last week we had to use my phone. I had to, I got forced to use the technology at hand. Uh -huh. Literally. Literally to, at, to at. use my cell phone to do the show. So it, it was only a week. It was only a week, and we, we made it. And I actually heard a couple <coughs> people say it was a good show. So, so there we go. That, that's all that matters. There we go. Okay. This week. Oh, Facebook Live. Hey. Oh, see, Tim wasn't here last week, so he didn't. Like he, a chair. So he didn't hear that my sister, who lives in Winter Haven, Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Well, then you saw, well you saw it on uh, when when you did when you did the 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 the, the porch talk for Facebook. So anyway, you got it. But so anyway, my sister watched the show on Facebook Live. So I know we got at least one listener out there. God bless you, viewer. You know, two. We got two. Okay. <laughs> oh, and, and as his fingers, he gonna run out of fingers and toes out in a little bit. So so they keep going up. But the, the, the numbers keep going up, and, and, and that's important because I, I met a couple of people the last week or so who say, well, I can't get it. I say, well, Facebook Live and PorchTalkRadio.com. You can go back and look at past shows. It's all there. And if you really, 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 really look real hard, you may be able to find shows all the, back, all the way back to when we first started. I have them somewhere. Mm -hmm. If you were interested in them, I would take the time, and energy, and effort to post them all. We got them somewhere. We don't throw away shows. I got a couple of uh, uh, what they used to call them, passports, mm -hmm. you know, with, with gigs and information, and they got hundreds, uh, if not thousands, of shows. Because we've been here for six years, and that's about two or three hundred shows right there. So, anyway. Okay. What I have been alluding to mm -hmm. that's a nice word and a lot of folks have wondered how do black folks and I'm talking to everybody but you know my primary audience here because I I've heard it mentioned at least three or four times today already mm -hmm. about intergenerational wealth mm. how do you create it how do you keep it how do you maintain it you know all this stuff Time is the main object because, <laughs> think about this, it's a lot of things, I'm 68, it's a lot of things that are available and taken for granted now that wasn't around when I was a child. Mm -hmm. Cell phones. In the 70s and 80s, the cell phone used to weigh about four or five pounds. They used to call it a brick. Mm -hmm. And someone would tell me this morning, they had one, but you have to carry around the battery. Bag, yeah. Bag they, had a bag, they had a bag with it. The little thing you, you, you stick in your pocket now. If you would have invested in the right stock <coughs> that the cell phone companies grew out of, Back then, and it wouldn't have took a lot of money. You could have not only made money for yourself, mm -hmm. you could have made money for your kids. And they could have took that money and made, and used it for their kids. So, every now and then, world, global changes mm -hmm. happen. Mm -hmm. Now, remember... For thousands and thousands of years, horse, horses and ox was major means of transportation. So if you was alive like a hundred years ago, mm -hmm. and you had a, 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 a wagon or a cart, it was pulled by horses. And it had been since the beginning of time for folks back then knew. <coughs> 
So so what they was doing was what was normal and and and, and good and 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 advanced mm-hmm. as far as they're concerned. So they used to call it a carriage. Mm-hmm. Now back then they had what they call a whip. Psh, psh, psh. You know, make your horse go faster. You know, uh, get his attention, make him slow down. Okay. If I was into stocks and bonds and things like that, and I had a business, that was important because that's <clears throat> how I made my living. And then one day, they came up with this horseless carriage. Now, I had to do one thing. If I was in the buggy whip business, I needed to transfer that and somehow get involved with this new horseless carriage thing and figure out how to make it work for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, folks who are older <clears throat> than I am remember ice box. Oh, yeah. The ice man come in a truck every day and give you a block of ice. And the top part of your refrigerators now, you would put the, the block of ice up there and it would keep your food cold. Okay, well, if I was in the ice business and ice box came along and I didn't advance and, and see that the ice box was going to change things, I lost my business, mm-hmm. my livelihood, and I lost an opportunity. Okay, now, in the last 10 years, we got stuff coming around. <laughs> we got to call us. I haven't even got to the point yet. Okay, caller, welcome to Force Talk Radio. This fine Saturday morning, afternoon. Hey. Who are you? Where are you calling from? And what's are you? Hello? Hello? Hey, how you doing? Let me talk to you. How you doing now? I'm doing great, sir. Look here. I, I, I agree with you on that same time. Uh, uh, we lost time because, you know, the, the, you know, uh, uh, when we don't have the knowledge of a thing, you know, I mean, we, we just don't know. And, and we they need to teach kids that in school now. You know, uh, 40 years ago, they took vocational skills out of the school. So we got away from, we got away from the business part of, 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 of those things. Now, we've got to start all over again. Black folks, black folks got to start all over and come together and get on one accord with some things. And that's, and that's the only way we're going to win. We're going to come got to come together with it now. That black folk out there still making it and doing very well. You know, so I don't, I don't want to deceive doing with you. One thing you said about uh, 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 your, your partner there, your, your partner, black folk got to understand, you know, Spanish folk really don't deal with black folk in America that much. You know what I mean? I know it's a, you, and, you and him have a certain, you and him have a certain friendship. That's okay. I got a, I got a Spanish neighbor. You know, they, they, they barely speak to me. And that's okay. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. All right, thanks for the call. Okay, as I okay, as I was saying, we're we're at this point in which the whole world is going to change in the next ten to twenty years. So so you got the opportunity to get on the bottom floor of technologies that's going to change the world. Now, whether or not black, black folks, black folks, whether you get on or not, or not, is coming. And so, so what I'm not going to do is tell you to go buy stock YZ8. I'm not telling you to go buy that. I don't even know if that is a stock. Never know. But that's the way stocks name themselves. I'm going to tell you three platforms that you can look at for yourself and know that they are part of an industry that's coming whether you want it to or not. Mm-hmm. And what I'm telling you to do is go look at what this industry has done, where it's come from, and where it's going. 
And if you do that with any success, you're going to know right now you're on the bottom floor. Because this technology is, 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 is going to be 50, 60, maybe 100 years, and it's going to keep growing. So if you, if you get on it now, what I'm telling you about the icebox and about the horseless carriage, the car, mm -hmm. you getting on it when you're doing a transition from the horse and the carriage to the automobile, to the Ford T, Model T. Mm -hmm. from, from that giant box, five pound sticking to your ear trying to talk to somebody away from the house, we're, we're at that stage. And I'm going to tell you the three industries, and I want you to remember this. First industry, I want you to take a look at. It's called EV, e electrical vehicles. They got cars, they got buses, they got trucks and trains. 20 years ago, Tesla was a startup company and the stocks were penny stocks. When I start planning to give you information about this show, I was going to, I, I know everybody has heard of Tex, Tesla. Tes, yep, T-E-S-L-A, Tesla, Tesla. got it even may have bought a car with that name on it. Tesla stock, 20 years ago, if you had invested $100 a share, $100 may have bought you 100 shares of stocks. This morning, Tesla is selling for over $1,000 a share. So if you'd have bought 100 shares at a dollar a piece 20 years ago, 100 times 1,000. Much money. Is a million dollars. I mean, would it cost you a hundred dollars twenty years ago? Now you're a millionaire, one stop. But those people was in on the ground floor. Tesla still on the ground floor, the bottom floor of EVs. They 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 they're, they're on the ground floor that's got very competitive because a whole bunch of people in a lot of different countries that are making and investing billions of dollars in electric vehicles. I'm not saying electric cars. I'm talking about all kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Electric vehicles. <clears throat> One place where now you ain't got to buy Tesla, but it's a lot of other stocks out there, 20, 30, 10, 10 bucks that you can get in and get in on the ground floor. What you got to do is kind of look and study and figure out which ones are good and got a bright future and which ones are bad. And I know Talking to black folks, you know, you say, oh, I'm, I don't like that and this and that. We talk about how to make money, not only for you, but for your family. Mm -hmm. Everybody talking about affordable housing and, and all that stuff that has to do with right. having money. Right now, yeah. This is the way to take a, it's a gamble. You know, and I, let, me, let me say that now. The stock market is <clears> a gamble. But, you can win. But. If you go find out, do this, do this little bit of knowledge research for yourself and know why you put your money in that electric vehicle stock, you will be a winner. Because you can take four stocks and three of them can be bad and the one stock that's good, can keep shooting up like a rocket. And you know, Eddie, right now, to, to, to testify to the be early beginnings, we know that Microsoft started out in someone's garage, and we know that HP... Bill Gates. 
started out in the garage putting their stuff together. Apple. Uh, Apple started out the same way. <clears throat> so it's, it's having uh, the ability to go, everybody's got a smartphone nowadays, not that we are, but the phones are, and we can go look up companies, we can go look up industries, and we can type in leading companies, uh, winning companies, we can go look, Google all that on our phones wherever we sit, and say, well, that's interesting, this one keeps leading the pack. Are they new to the industry? What do we know about the leadership? What's the name of that leadership? Let's look that up. Right there from your phone, from your couch, you can do research right there. All right, now, electric cars, electric vehicles, period. That's one market. Mm -hmm. To go along <clears throat> with that market, there's another industry that's getting ready to boom. Batteries. Okay, your iPhone got a battery. Your electric car got a battery. Your electric watch, your electric car, your, your electric clock on the wall, yeah. you know, your stove, your refrigerator, all these different things have components. Mm -hmm. That have batteries in them. They may be electric, you plug in the wall, but some of those things still have batteries. My clock, I got a clock that's electric clock, but it got a battery in it because when the power goes off, you know, it still keeps time. How old is that clock, Eddie? Uh, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a battery. Okay, they, not, now they're talking about making batteries that once you buy a car and it's got a battery in it, it will never, ever need to be charged again. They're talking about 12 million mile batteries. They're talking about quantum glass batteries. They're talking about lithium batteries. So there's a whole market segment that's on the ground floor of development because all this electronic stuff and all this future electronic stuff <clears throat> and, and batteries do like everything else. Over time, they get better, stronger, and they last longer. Mm -hmm. And the price will come down. So, so supplies and materials and all that stuff. And again, this is not just the U.S. They got companies all over the world that's doing battery research mm -hmm. and they are competing with each other to be the first one with the battery that everybody wants in their electronic equipment. Not just cars. Not just iPhones. Laptop, computers. I mean, all that stuff. And, and and then then you got people talking about well solar well uh, what they're trying to do now is pretty much make it so that solar becomes obsolete. I think it was there before we got there, Eddie. Even though it's free, or people think it's free. Well, yeah. If I got a battery that will last twelve years with no charges, that affects oil production. Yeah. Fossil fuel, all that stuff. Because I, if I buy a Tesla and it has a battery in it that don't need to be recharged every 300, 400 miles, that I can go all year and charge it in 23, 2023. 20, I mean, I could go all of 2022 and don't have to charge my battery. And I can go anywhere I can drive this car. Now, Eddie, with that technology, for those batteries, those Tesla batteries that fit underneath the entire car, they run between seventeen to twenty-one thousand dollars for a battery. But the, when it's time to replace it, somebody making money again. What I'm saying, the technology mm -hmm. is is on the ground floor. <clears throat> Twenty years ago, there was no Tesla auto battery. Mm -hmm. So if you get in now on electronic 
vehicles, electric vehicles, and, and, and you study it and you say, oh, well, well, it's older than Eddie said it is. I, I want to get in something that's got more up, more, more upscale. More, more risk. Of course there's more risk. Mm -hmm. But if I got $100 to invest, mm -hmm. I could probably buy more battery stock mm -hmm. for hundred dollars than I can electronic vehicle stock. Yep. I'm just saying. Pluses and minus, costs, variance, everything. It's probably a few upstart battery companies that nobody knows about that you'll get in for, for pennies on the dollar. Literally, and, right. and and in ten years, <clears throat> five years. It's going to be like Tesla. Now, Eddie, uh, at one time in my past, I was helping me with being a financial planner. And the money that you're talking about to put into these great ideas, which help leave a legacy for the family, for the children, uh, initially today, for you to go out and do that, whoever's listening, you need to be able to lose that money and be all right. If, if your rent's not going to get paid because you just invested it, then that was dumb. You don't have any groceries next week, that was dumb. It's a gamble. Yeah, so you got to be able to lose right. it and say, all right, pretend you just lent it to that cousin you know you shouldn't have loaned squat to, and you'll never see it again, and move on. Okay, next market. <laughs> okay, I said three markets, uh -huh. and all of them are pretty much equal because they have to do with 5, 10, 15, 50 years in the future. Mm -hmm. And so all you folks know <clears throat> and understand electrical vehicles got a range. Mm -hmm. Top scale, 400 miles. Almost all of them Getting there. go 400 miles or less on yep. a charge. Yep. So, my trip is to Canada, New Jersey. And everybody know I hate Canada. Can't get to Canada, New Jersey on one charge on my new Tesla. Where am I going to charge my Tesla? between here in Canada, New Jersey. So that means this actually don't exist. There may be one here, one the there. I, I can go Very find good. one. But there is an entire infrastructure mm -hmm. for every filling station, service station, gas pump between here in Canada, New Jersey. There's a spot being made for there to be an electric charging station. Mm -hmm. The infrastructure for not just only the United States, Germany, China, Japan, everywhere in the world that's got cars now will have to have infrastructure for these new charging stations. So you can you can kind of get in and say, I'm gonna invest money into the charging station infrastructure mm -hmm. or and this is something a lot of people don't know the electricity that sh shows up at the charging station at the gas pump has a system at the station that generates electricity and it's usually a diesel mm. generator. Oh. Yeah. So so you're not just getting electricity coming out the ground from the tank that just had this big old truck come in and fill up. Mm -hmm. You got a diesel generator there. And they already got diesel in the ground. So they, they probably hook up the <clears> diesel generator and get a direct line from the pump so you ne gotta never run out of diesel for the generator that's going to be generating electricity for all these electric cars and all these electric vehicles and drum roll if you can charge your car you probably can charge everything else that's electrical that's the way electricity works they just gotta put a spot in there for you to plug your your your, your phone in, <laughs> uh, like or, your la or your laptop, or anything else that's 
that's got a rechargeable battery in it. The infrastructure don't exist. So that means I got to pick and choose where I'm going to go in my electric car and what they don't have. Like, now, look, look at your cell phone, everybody. You used to have to be home to charge it. Now they got quick charging mm -hmm. stations that you kind of, because somebody said, well, I ain't got an hour to let my car charge. Well, guess what? In your future, they got quick charge we'll see. stations that you can charge your, your electronic battery in the same amount of time it takes to, to fill up your tank. It's coming. It ain't there yet, but it's coming. But all this is part of the infrastructure. And, and with the Biden $3 trillion bill, the United States government is paying folks, paying companies billions of dollars to research and develop these charging stations. So when we talk about electric cars, mm -hmm. about batteries, mm -hmm. and infrastructure, but the thing, all of them stocks are selling wildly right now, and some of it's inexpensive. Caller, welcome to Porch Talk Radio on this fine Saturday afternoon. Who are you? Where are you calling from? And what's are you? Hello. Eddie Adams. Yes, sir. Joe Riles. Calling from West Tampa. And you on point. Because this bill, these things are called West Earth Minerals. You know the country that has the largest rare earth mineral? Africa. China. You know who has the second largest reserve of rare earth minerals? Yeah. Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. That's where we go there. You know how much the United States got? Next to nothing. We got one mine in Mountain Pass, California. Because it takes almost about a half a billion dollars to develop a rare earth mineral mine. So this is what this global thing is about because you're right. The technology is going to that time of using rare earth minerals. You know why? Because batteries is correct. Now there ain't a battery yet lasts forever because there ain't enough lithium out there for the United States to get solar panels. Right. have to be made with rare earth minerals. So the bottom line is, is that globally, that's why China, Afghanistan, are doing what they're doing and sending they kind of sending their rockets up to the night satellite back. And we're a little behind because guess what? We don't have rare earth minerals. We can't even get circuit boards for new cars. And that's why we can't get new cars out there for people to buy because of rare earth minerals. So as soon as we can invest, like you're saying, in that rare earth mineral technology and the uh offspring of that technology that uses all of them, use the battery that Tesla, all of you, wrath, earth, metal, we ain't going nowhere. And that's what the fight's going to be about in the next 10 to 20 years is for wrath, earth, metal. So I just wanted to add to your conversation your own point. You're a scientist like me, and have a nice day, bro. And you talk about the right thing. That's a good investment. Wrath, earth, metal, and any derivative of that. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Thank, Thank you, Joe. Joe. And, 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 and Joe Robson is, is probably one of the smartest people I know. And, 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 and sometimes, if you look around you, you can see what's coming. Now, what is different between black folks and white folks, uh -huh. Come on. white folks is investing. They're making it happen. We, we, we are, as black folks, is on the sideline watching it happen. And, and and what I'm telling you now is usually because of money. You know, I ain't got a, I ain't got a bunch of extra money. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to tell you, the nature of this stuff is you have seen it happen before. I'm telling you, the first couple of guys who bought a car, oh, car is too expensive, this and this and this and this. If someone would took a couple of sandwiches, mm -hmm and invested the cost of a couple of packs of cigarettes, a couple of beers, mm -hmm. into the car back then, mm -hmm. they saw it coming. 
they did not, and they're talking about, I hear an awful lot of black folks talking about, I would have, should have, could have. Mm -hmm. No, it's everywhere. Eddie. I should have did this. I could have did that. I am telling you right now. Good. Look around. They are improving batteries every day. They're going to have a battery that's going to last longer than the car. Eventually, they will have a battery that when you buy the car, you would never have to put gas in it, and you would never have to charge it. Because that's the nature of the beast that they are trying to create now. It ain't made yet. It ain't created yet. Mm -hmm. I know all of you at point, some point in time saw the Jetsons when you was a kid. Saw the Jetsons on TV. A lot of that stuff back in the 1950s, the 1960s when the Jetsons was on TV, mm -hmm. it was supposed to be futuristic. Dick Tracy had a wrist watch radio. That was a big deal. But guess what? Your cell phone connects to your wristwatch right now, and you can do everything with your cell phone that you can do with your laptop. Now, it's just a matter of time. Because what I'm telling you now, I can see technology changing every day around me. And, and, and this is not a rich man, poor man game. It's a person who understands the technology and the information. You ain't got to get a PhD in electronics to figure this stuff out. I'm, and, and I'm going to give you another variable. You can pick four horrible stocks and pick one good one, and in five, ten years, be a millionaire. I'm not trying to tell you some easy way and get rich quick scheme thing. I am telling you, look out your door and you see this technology coming. They got places around the world like France and some other places where the train system is electronic. So what happens when they come, come up with a battery? that will power an entire system like that. You changing something that they're gonna be, they're gonna have transportations are gonna be around forever. You know, Eddie, and we talked earlier uh, before we started the show about investing in 5G five, 10 years ago, and they are beginning to talk about it. Right now, I believe there's a seven or an eight they're talking about today. <clears throat> so it's being wise, like you said, look it up, go research it, uh, and find the companies that begin to offer the, the 7 and 8 and maybe even 10G out there and find out about them because one day that's going to be it. That's all these phones are going to work off of is those higher numbers. Because I remember when I had a cell phone and they, used, they started cutting off the towers and uh, the StarTac phone back in the day, like, uh, and yeah, that was 3. Uh, that was back then. It was three, 3G, I guess they called it. Yeah, 3G made dial-up look wonderful. And now 5G makes that look like dial-up. So, Eddie, you're right. you got to keep looking. you got to research. Uh, go look it up. And like Eddie says, go go buy, go look at the penny stocks. Uh, and if you pick five of them, something's got to hit. Okay, now, let, let, me, let me give you some personal experience. Not advice. About stock. As an investor in the 80s and 90s, when a lot of the big tech stocks was coming up, and I had a little money that I invested, and I'm going to tell you what happens. And, and I'm, so, I'm, so I'm giving you the bad side. I gave you some of the good stuff, mm -hmm. but let me tell you some of, the, some of the bad stuff. It's like crack. It's worse than crack. Because. because I had a job 
where I could take some time every day and go look at my stock. Uh. I wasn't a day trader. I just wanted to see how it was doing. And when it was going up, my butt would pucker. Because you just think, man, boy, look at all this money I got. Boy, my stocks are doing great. My stock went from ten, fifteen thousand dollars to sixty or seventy thousand dollars, which is great. But I'm gonna tell you the downfall, especially of most people, especially with tech stocks. You can check this out. I sat there and I watched it go up and watched all this money in my accounts. And I'm, I'm saying, boy, I have made fifty or $60,000. The average person is greedy. Uh -huh. You think it's endless. It's going to keep going up forever. But. <laughs> and and, 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 that, and that, that's where the crack comes in. As opposed to going and taking your money out or the figuring out what point I'm going to take my money out yeah. and do something else with it while I still made money. Back off the risk. Folks, you sit there and watch it go all the way up and you likewise make excuses to yourself that it's going to go back, it's going to go back, it's going to go back when it starts falling. This, this is stock spirit. Tech stocks was a big market. In 2000, it crashed. Eddie Adams Jr. lost $69,000. Because as it kept falling, I kept saying, it's going to go back up, it's going to go back up, it's going to go back up, it's going to go back up. And I had thousands of shares of different stocks that had went up and climbed and, and, I, and, I, and I was doing good. And if I could have just quit, if I could have just called my stockbroker, say, send me my money, I'm going to zero out my stocks, I'd have made a bunch of money. But. <laughs> but. Not only did I lose all the advancement all the way mm -hmm. up to $69,000, I sit there and watch all those stocks one by one by one go down to zero. I don't think you can help that part, Eddie. Could not, could not pull the switch because now I've lost my initial, I'm losing my initial investment. Uh -huh. So I'm saying to myself, well, I got to wait to it go back up, and then when it zero out, I'm gonna take the money out, and I and I be where I started. Don't work like that. Mm -hmm. You 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 sitting there and you watching it and you watching it, and you you're reacting, you're doing stuff, you're you're actively involved in the process. But the main thing you're gonna do, I, and I'm gonna say this to you, and I'm gonna say it, and hope everybody who's ever invested in the stock hear me. Until you take your money, a dollar at a time, a million dollars at a time, out of the market, it is at risk. Oh, yeah. You can lose all of it at any time in any market. Mm -hmm. Now, my investments and what I do is... When stocks start going up, it is hard to not be greedy and say, man, if I had more money, I would make more money. No. No. And, and, and I'm going to use this as a rule. Whatever you start with, it's a $1,000. Mm -hmm. When you make $1,000 off of your first $1,000, Take your damn money out. Take that thousand dollars you started with out of the market. Now you actually made money. You made 
$1,000. So you still got $1,000. Now you can take that $1,000 you started that one with, go invest it in something else. But you made $1,000. If you cash out. Off of that market. Go find another market. Take that $1,000 and put it in there. When you make $1,000 there, see, at some point you'll come to the point to where all of the money in the market that's yours is money made off of the market. So you personally may have invested $10,000 through 10 stocks. You have went and bought your wife some jewelry and went and bought that smart car I went and went and went and bought that 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 new next, next next to next to infinity cell phone, but you did something. Bought a new suit, got some new teeth. Uh oh, <laughs> you know, gotta what, get the teeth. Whatever, whatever you need to do. But you took your money out of the market. It's no longer at risk, and you get to use it. So you could you could do like banks. You could you could do the the, the rule of doubling. So that thousand dollars you left in there from the first thousand dollars has now grown to ten thousand dollars. You know what you do? Don't be greedy. Mm -hmm. Because now you got ten thousand dollars. All came from the market. You took your thousand dollars out way back when. Take five thousand. Of that ten thousand out, a lot of a lot of a lot of economists and a lot of professionals will tell me, "Oh, Eddie, you know, you're telling people wrong stuff." I am telling you, so you get to enjoy the fruits of your labor. Take five thousand dollars and take your wife on a trip. <clears throat> take five thousand dollars and, and and go help your daughter. Go help your son. Go help your people. Give it to charity. Mm -hmm. But what will happen is. That five thousand dollars that you got left in that account can can grow to ten thousand dollars, grow to twenty. Next, when that when that five thousand dollars go to twenty, take ten thousand dollars out. See what what we're doing is we're not just making money and saving it and hoarding it, and then we die and have all this money in the stock market. Uh, we leave it to one of our kids, and and in two weeks they flat broke because mm -hmm. you gone. That happens. It's taking what the system, this capitalist system, is good. Why white folks got so much? They have learned how to use this system. Mm -hmm. And you very seldom hear about black folks jumping out the window on Wall Street because they just lost <laughs> all their money in the market. Yeah. You don't hear Spanish either. <laughs> we, 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 see, 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 it pays and rewards well. And if you are taking and using the benefits that, that are derived from the capitalist system, say, say get to be $50,000, and I'm not talking dream stuff, I'm talking it happened. Because if you invested in Tesla stock 10 years ago, mm -hmm. you got a million dollars. Now, say, say, say you got to be 50 thousand dollars. Take twenty five. Go do something with it. If it's nothing more than put it in your bank account and you know you're losing money because it's in the bank account as opposed to being in the stock market. But guess what? You can pull it out and enjoy it. You can spin it. You can eat it. You can ride on it. Ride in it. You can help somebody. See, I got the tax perspective in my head because I used to give people financial advice thinking, you know, for me to be able to donate to a charity church uh, for a missions trip for everybody that wants to go, including myself, I get a write-off on it, go to some other country, have a heck of a time, and it's all write-off. So I'm, I kept the gains might be the only cost I'm out. Always with all the advice we we're kind of giving you, we're not giving advice, we're giving recommendations for you to go do something with your money aside from leave it in your bank and your mattress or in the mason jar. Make sure you get yourself a tax uh, professional along the way. So you get to hold on to some of it. You don't get stuck. Okay. On this day. Another disclaimer. <laughs> on this day. And, 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 I, and I found this morning 
Mm-hmm. That there's there's people again who likes on this day. Is that right? I mean, that was one of the things they mentioned to me. I like on this day. It's interesting. It's good stuff there, and that's why we do it. It's about knowledge and information, and and stuff. And and like I told her, it's some stuff that may hit somebody ears. It may excite them into doing something and the fact that they, they didn't have the information that now they go look it up mm-hmm. and, and go do some investigation and it motivates them to go do something else maybe even yep. change their lives and, and i know you're gonna say oh eddie how could just doing the on this day thing change somebody's lives Never it's action oh anytime you're doing something there's a positive for every reaction, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So if you're doing something, it can make, who knows what can happen. Anyway, on this day, November the 11th, 1816, <clears throat> Indiana was admitted to the Union as the 19th American state. On this day, 1844, Dr. Horace Wells became the first person to have a tooth extracted after having an anesthetic for the dental procedure. Nitrox oxide, or better known as laughing gas, was the anesthetic. That's in 1844. Mm. On this day, December 11th, 1872, I want y'all to listen good to this because this is something I didn't know and had never heard before. Pitney Benton Stewart Pinchbank became the first American black governor Mm. when he took office as acting governor of the state of Louisiana. Huh. See? Back in in eighteen seventy two there was a black governor. Oh. In the South. Didn't he come on a slave ship too? I don't know. Uh, everybody came on a slave ship, we're told. I don't know. And and last but not least, on this day, December the eleventh, nineteen eighty, US President Jimmy Carter signed Ooh into law legislation creating a $1.6 billion environmental super fund that would be used to pay for cleaning up chemical piles, chemical spills, and toxic waste dumps. And and, and the money's gone and they still got chemical piles and waste dumps and everything and and I think uh, Biden just gave him another trillion dollars. Gabriel. Kind of like part of the war on poverty, Eddie. Same result. Nothing. It's still there after we spent trillions on that mess, too. It still ain't any better. Meanwhile, Omnicron, the latest uh, variant of the week. Uh, it's, uh, Pfizer just mentioned they're going to do a, probably need a new fourth vaccine dose uh, to help with the new variant, Omnicron, and it'll have its own set of boosters as well. So those of you that have still survived all the shots and the boosters. Hang in there, they'll get you yet. Uh, now, meanwhile, if you thought long enough on this on Australia, got the Omnicron variant. If no one can come in and no one can leave, huh, how'd they get it? And that's an island. Yeah, that's an island. Well, that's weird, isn't it? Oh. Moving along, on, on the United Kingdom, which has some of the highest vaccination rates in the planet right now, uh, they're showing uh, hospitalizations for the last uh, few weeks. Uh, vaccinated uh, hospitalizations was 5,124. Unvaccinated was 2,832. Uh, the vaccinated that have died, they've got 2,185. Of the unvaccinated that have died, 487. Mm. And this is from the United Kingdom. This is their numbers. Good thing they got them shots over there. The CDC takes over the TSA role with new airport surveillance powers and travel restrictions. 
The CDC is now looking in on the TSA and they are growing into another huge government monster. Meanwhile, just, just a little history, yellow fever took 35 years to develop a vaccine for yellow fever. Polio, it took 45 years. Hepatitis B, it took 17 years. Hepatitis A, took 22 years to develop a vaccine for it. COVID, one year. <laughs> Isn't that weird? One year for COVID. 12 months. Yeah, and it still ain't working. Uh, meanwhile, Oregon governor signs a bill, yes, it's a Democrat, of course, removing reading, writing, and math requirements for high school kids to help the poor kids of color. Excuse me? So we're wanting to remove all standards for kids of color so they'll continue being failures? Folks, these are Democrats that have been put in power. It's a white woman, too. They just want to keep the black people dumb and ignorant so they can just keep... Uh, Okay, moving on. Now, let's go on to happier notes. The Bible never tells us to get out of debt. It tells us we're not to have any. Uh, let's see, happy news. Ah, Fisher Price, for the moment right now, is offering a happy hour play set. It includes pretend bar stools, pretend beer bottles, pretend Jack Daniels. You got a cell phone at the end of the counter where the guy can, the boy can say, yeah, Susan, I'm on my way home. I'm in the car now. Let's see here. Uh, meanwhile, the man who planted bombs during the George Floyd unrest was sentenced to probation. That's right. Another Democrat-run town. And uh, just gave the guy who planted bombs during the George Floyd deal probation. Ah, let him go. It's okay. Meanwhile, you guys that voted for Democrat, your Democrat cohorts in Washington want a four-day work week. The stress of making $174,000 with expense budgets and staff doing the work for them, it's just too hard. They want to make it into a four-day, and of course the benefits are paid. Uh, I think we're coming down to the end here as we go to try to find some happy notes, Eddie. we got to have some. Ah, Walmart has announced that they will be closed this year for Christmas. This is to allow their self-checkout machines time with their families. All right, all right. Well, folks, like I said at the beginning of the show, all this stuff we gave you was platforms. It's not political. It's how you create wealth, not only for you, but for your kids. So, until next week, Boom. same bat time, same bat station, Tampa Bay, we love you. God bless. See ya. <laughs>